Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss threat modeling. What is a model? A model is a replica. It's a sample of what something would look like. What are we doing here? We're looking at what would a threat would look like. But it's a structured approach. It's a formal approach used by organization to do what? To identify, assess, and address potential cybersecurity threat on our IT systems. So what are we doing? We are being proactive. Why are we doing so? Because how, how would you deal with a threat to your IT infrastructure? You wait until that threat happen, occur, materialize, then you respond. Or you can be a proactive. You can try to guess. You can try to figure out what could have happened and do what? Create defenses against potential attacks. How do you do that? You do what's called threat modeling. What if? To do what? To have to manage your cybersecurity risk. The goal of threat modeling is to understand the risk. What type of risk am I facing? Then develop appropriate measures, appropriate defenses to either mitigate the impact, reduce the impact, reduce the effect on my company, or better, prevent. It means eliminate the risk altogether, eliminate that threat altogether. And this is what we will discuss in this session. How do a company create this threat modeling, which is a model, what steps do they follow? Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. First thing they do is they evaluate the threat landscape. What is the landscape? Landscape is the overall picture. Look at the big picture. The threat landscape is an overview looking at the big picture of all potential threats that an organization and its infrastructure might encounter. Now, bear in mind, this is not a one-time thing. It's a dynamic field. Why? Because the threat is continually evolving. Cyber criminals, that's their job. They are working 24-7. So your job as a cybersecurity uh, officer or a cybersecurity personnel is to work 24-7. It's, it's a dynamic field, continuously evolving as new technology threats are emerging and the actors are developing novel, new attack methods. So what you have to do is a regular assessment because it's constantly changing. Now, what would you look at when you're going over this landscape, uh, threat landscape? What would you look at? Well, you would look at what we call attack vectors. What are vectors? Vectors are entry points are pathways, are places where the attackers start. These are the methods or pathways through which an attacker can gain unauthorized access to the system. What could be some examples of vectors? Well, could be through a phishing attack. They can exploit software weaknesses, or they can use brute force attacks if they see that's necessary. Also, in evaluating the threat landscape, you would look at the magnitude of the impact. What's the magnitude? The magnitude is how bad things could be as a result of this attack, understanding the potential damage or impact of each threat. Why is that important? Because that's going to help you prioritize security measures. You can list maybe 10 different threats. Well, they are all threats. Do you treat them all the same? No. You have to look at their impact. First, you would have to look at what is the probability of that happening? If the probability is high, that means they could happen. Okay, that's fine. Then we would look at the impact. If that happens, what's the impact? <laughs> the extreme example I like to give to explain the impact, because the, the magnitude of impact is also used in your auditing course, is if you use a plane to travel. If you use a plane to travel, the probability of an accident, of a plane crash happening, is pretty low. It's close to 0%. It's actually, it's higher than driving a car. Driving to the airport to take the airplane, there's a higher risk of getting into a car crash. However, the magnitude of impact is totally different. If a plane crash, 
there is close to 100% chance no one will survive. In a car crash, there is a good chance people would survive with new technology, seat belts, airbags, so on and so forth. So the magnitude of impact could range for a company from minor disruption to significant financial losses. So not all threats are equal, or it could be reputational damage. That's also serious. So you have to take a look at the different threats, the probability of happening, and the magnitude. And based on that, you will prioritize what you need to know, what you need to do. So the impact of a successful attack could range from unauthorized transaction leading to financial losses or to a severe breach of customer trust and reputational damage. Financial losses, we can deal with them. We might have insurance. Reputational damage, a little bit more difficult, more serious threat. Also, you would look at existing weaknesses, existing vulnerabilities. What could be examples of existing vulnerabilities? Outdated software. Let's look at those. That's part of our landscape. Let's bring them up to date, patch them, replace them, do whatever is necessary. Weak passwords, let's eliminate them. Have a strong password policy. Insufficient network protection, let's strengthen. Let's harden our network. And we'll talk about all of those in later sessions, how to do that. We also need to take a look at the type of the threat we are we are facing. It could be social engineering threat, it could be insider threat, which is the most difficult because we're looking at employees that know inside information, know our system from the inside, because most of the defenses are designed for an outsider and network-based attacks. So recognizing these attacks allow the organization to tailor, to basically create defensive more effectively. Also, what else could help us understand our landscape is using what we call TIP, Threat Intelligence Platform. Threat Intelligence Platform play an important role in, in the continuous assessment of the threat landscape. What are Threat Intelligence Platform? Those are advanced software tools. What do they do? They help organization in gathering, analyzing, and managing data on current and potential threat cybersecurity. So what this software will do and they're provided by companies, as they collect information about the cybersecurity threat that's going on from open source intelligence, social media, dark web forums. That's their job. Their job is to collect information and offering you a broad perspective, letting you know what's going on in that cybersecurity threat. And the purpose of this is to help you understand and strategize which method or methods the enemies are using. That's why it's intelligence. It's, it's basically collecting information about who's going to attack you and letting you know this is what they're planning. Do something about it. Also, they can help you spot system vulnerabilities because if they can tell you what they're looking for and they will tell you this, these are the vulnerabilities that they look for in, in the attack, you want to look at those vulnerabilities and fix them to, and implement measures to counteract threats effectively. So by leveraging these platforms, intelligence, a threat intelligence platform, you can understand and effectively remember, prioritize, because not all threats are the same cybersecurity effort focusing on the most important and potentially the most damaging threat first. Once you understand the attacks, you want to develop controls and countermeasures. That's, well, knowing the threats or the potential threat and doing nothing about them, it's useless. So with a clear understanding of the potential threat, the, the company will design and implement and put into action appropriate security measures. Those could include technical controls, technology, firewalls, antivirus. It could be administrative control, uh, security policies, training people, training employees, bringing specialists to help us defend our company. The aim is to create a layered defense strategy, more than one defense strategy, a layer. And we're going to talk about layered defenses later on that address multiple potential attack vectors if the attacks coming from different places to reduce our risk profile, to reduce the chances of them successfully attacking our data, servers, uh, network, computers, software, so on and so forth. Now, the best way to illustrate this from a practical perspective is to look at steps in the threat modeling and at the same time using an example. So the steps in the threat modeling could involve identifying assets. Step one, identifying threats, that threats that affect those assets perform reduction analysis, analyze impact of an attack, develop countermeasures and controls, and at the end, review and evaluate all the steps that you undertook. So I'm going to be using a company called SafeBank, a banking company, just to kind of look at the step and say, this is what would happen for a company. Now, obviously, 
this is not a, a full example, but it gives you an idea. So step one is identify your assets. If you want to defend something, the first thing you is you want to know is what am I defending? What are the assets that needs to be defended? So you would list everything valuable and everything is valuable. All your assets are valuable because they need protection. But to be specific, this include the data, the hardware, the software, intellectual property, a physical asset, so on and so forth. For example, SafeBank, the company that we're using, the assets that we think that are valuable are customer personal and financial information, the mobile application code base, the servers hosting the app, the communication channel used for transmitting data. We list the identified asset. The next thing we do is what type of threats could, could threaten those assets? Well, the focus is on identifying potential threats to these assets. Now you have to put yourself in the shoes of the enemy. What ways they can use to target the system and what method they could use? For example, for SafeBank, they could the hackers aim to do what? To steal users' data. How can they do that? What's the method? Fission attacks. So you want to protect yourself against fission attacks. Exploit software vulnerabilities. For what purpose? To gain unauthorized access. Look at software vulnerabilities and fix them. And we're going to look at software vulnerabilities in a separate session. They could be intercepting data during transition, transmission to conduct financial fraud. Encrypt your data. How about that? So identify the threats, then perform reduction analysis. What's reduction analysis? Break down the system to understand how, it's, how it interacts with the threat. Now you look at how data flows, what the entry point, what are the security measures. You're looking at specific threats here. You want to map out how data moves from the user's device to the bank server. You want to identify the points where data can be inputted, such as login and, and, or transaction form. Review the app code for security practices and in doing that, so you're looking for the weak link in the system to protect yourself. Then you analyze the impact. If this happens, what is the impact on my company? Well, this involves assessing the potential damage. The damage could be money or it could be reputation or it could be both. Uh, an attack could put you literally out of, out of business. For safe bank, a successful attack could lead to significant financial losses for customers and the bank and most importantly, erode the trust in the app if the, app, if the attack happened through the app. And if you're a banking company, it's gonna lead to regulatory fines and legal action because banks are highly regulated like healthcare companies, like insurance companies. After you, after you analyze the impact, you wanna develop now countermeasures and control based on the magnitude, the impact of the magnitude. What do you do? Well, this phase involves creating strategies to mitigate the risk. This could be technical measures, policies and procedures, installing software, um, uh, inv uh, installing uh, firewalls, antiviruses, multi-factor authentication to enhance account security, encrypt data in transit and at rest, and update any vulnerabilities on the app. And you want to also establish a rapid incident response plan in case you are attacked. Last but not least is review and evaluate. Threat modeling is not a one-time event. It's an ongoing process. As I mentioned, cyber criminals are constantly working. Therefore, you have to constantly review, update the threat model to address any new threat and vulnerabilities as they emerge. For example, periodically, the bank will have to review its threat model, especially if there's an update to the app, because an update brings some weaknesses in it, or if there is a successful threat attack in the financial sector. You want to say, well, if another bank was successfully attacked, well, they might be able to replicate the same attack on my system. What can I do? This ensures that the bank's security measures remain effective over time. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A healthcare provider is using a threat intelligence platform to prioritize cybersecurity effort. What type of threat should be prioritized the highest due to its potential impact on patient data confidentiality. This question is loaded. One, they're telling us the industry, healthcare. Two, we're using a threat intelligence platform to identify the highest, the most important threat when it comes to the specific threat deals with data confidentiality. So in the answer choices, you could have four different threats. Well, first, is we have to identify the type of the threat. Does it deal with data confidentiality? And if it does, if we have more than one, 
let's surround them. So, or hopefully, if it doesn't belong to data confidentiality, it's easy elimination. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer choices. A, phishing attack targeting employees. Well, is this a cybersecurity threat? Absolutely. Does it deal with patient data confidentiality? It could, maybe through this uh, phishing attack, you can get the data confidentiality, but it's not directly toward data confidentiality. Is it a threat? Yes. Is it data confidentiality? Could be, but we really don't know. Adware affecting office computers. Adware are what? Adware is they install this annoying software on your system that's collect information, gives you ad information about ads, I collect uh, your activities to sell it to advertisers. It's annoying, but it doesn't really deal with the patient data confidentiality of your customers. I, would, I can eliminate B. I cannot eliminate A yet, but I can eliminate B. C, DDoS, distributed denial of service attack on the public website. And this is what it usually happens on the public website. What does that mean? It means they're bringing your website down. When they bring your website down, is it really affecting your data comp confidentiality? Not necessary. The data is behind the scene. Uh, the website, the public website, is just a place where customers access the data. So I would say I could also eliminate C. Safely eliminate C. D, malware designed to encrypt patient record. Hold on a second. Now we're dealing with data confidentiality. The question is about this, and we're dealing with patient record. Yes, this deals with data confidentiality. Hold on a second. They're installing a malware that's going to encrypt the data. That's a serious confidentiality violation. Why? Because once they encrypt my data, they're going to do one of two things. Either ask me for money or sell the data somewhere else. So that's going to violate my data confidentiality. I'm going to take out A at this point because D is the best answer. It's the highest priority when it comes to confidentiality of data for a healthcare provider, malware designed to encrypt patient record. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you whether you're studying for your CPA exam, accounting courses, or some other certification. Good luck, study hard, and happy studying.